Hello. Um, I hope it's okay for everybody that I do this in English because there's some people here who speak English only, I think. Um, so, uh, first of all, welcome everybody. Very nice to see you all. Uh, it's an important day for us, actually. Uh, we worked like 16 months on the Kilt protocol and today is the day where we launched it. Um, everybody's very much invited to play around with what we did. Uh, you can find everything on kilt.io. Uh, there's a demo client, there's an SDK for people who like to play around with SDKs. Um, no, that's not good, sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, for those of you who are not really familiar with Kilt, um, I will talk like 15 minutes about what this whole thing is actually about. So, if you build a solution, it's always nice to first have a problem. And uh, the problem we found was actually the problem of data collection by central services. Uh, as you see in this picture, this is how the internet normally works. There's a central service, we call that a platform. We have a platform economy. And many users log into the service or register at the service. And as soon as they're registered, they use the service. And by using the service, they produce data. And somehow, we learned that this data is owned by the platform and not by us. And this is actually fundamentally wrong because it's our data. And this imposes also a set of problems. One problem is very easy to see. Uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's a security issue, right? Um, when there's a central service and it collects a lot of data, then there's a lot of data and a lot of data is valuable. And of course, thieves will come and steal the data. So hackers are attracted. The second thing which we see with some platforms right now is that this whole concept of so much data in one silo in one place also is attractive for the owners of the silo to make business models which are not really in the intention of the user, I would say, like selling the data to interesting people. So uh, all this to leads to the problem People lose trust in the internet, and this is not good for the future, this is not good for economy as a whole. And this is only problem number one. Problem number two, two is an economic problem. If you have a data silo um, at one company, you automatically produce a monopoly. Because think of just Uber or Airbnb, if you have a better idea for a better taxi service, better than Uh, Uber, and you go to an, an investor and ask them for money, they will probably not give you money because they will say, there's already Uber, how will you ever go past Uber? This is not going to happen. There's one problem. The second problem, which is related to that, is that Uber will not, it will not become better. Uber will just stay as it is because they don't have competition, because the new companies are not coming in. So this is not good for producing future. And the third threat is, I think, actually the biggest threat. Because we're going towards a, a society where data becomes more and more important. And this is because of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And I think we all know that machine learning only works if you have huge amounts of data, really huge amounts of data. And if we let it happen that only some companies own a huge amount of data, those data will be the winners and the leaders of AI. And artificial intelligence will, I think we all know that, lead to a situation where we have less work, which is in the first place not bad because less work is what everybody likes, um, but uh, especially when the value creation is more. So if we can produce more value with less work, then everybody should be fine if the profit is evenly distributed. But in a, in a world where artificial intelligence, where the, uh, where the profit will be made in the future, is only made by some companies in the US, we will have a huge problem, especially in Europe. So we're going towards a society or a, yeah, a society in the future where we will lose the work and others will make the profit. And uh, this is not acceptable. 
So, uh, quite a huge problem we found, actually. Um, now, if you try to overcome this problem, uh, it's probably not enough uh, to, bu to build a startup in Berlin. Um, actually, we need to work together. I think to overcome these problems, we need a cooperative approach. First of all, I think we need policy makers. Policy makers have to raise awareness about this problem. We have a huge data problem. Um, and I think GDPR was a step in the right direction. GDPR is a really cool thing. For corporates, it's a little bit not so nice often because they have to live with GDPR. But the basic idea behind GDPR is let the users own their data. And this is the right approach in the right direction. We still need more legal framework, of course, uh, to, uh, to build a future um, of, of a uh, future internet. Then we need the tech companies like us, but not only us, also a lot of other com tech companies in our, um, around us, <coughs> which will provide alternatives. So, so the first thing was basically you need a framework where you can live in, a, a legal framework, right? Uh, if you have the legal framework, then you need to build a software framework, something which is a foundation on which you can build applications uh, which don't work like the Airbnbs and Googles and Ubers. So this is what we do and what others do. We call that the Web 3.0, so the next evolution of the web. And KILT, what you will see today, is an essential building block of this Web 3.0. But this is not enough, because we are just a software company. We can just build a foundation and say, here it is, and this is what we're doing today. After that, we will need industry and public administration to jump on this and build applications with it. Applications that are useful for the people out there. And have them use that, because this is how we can change it. This is how we can change the approach to data. This will take some time, but maybe today is one of the days where it goes a little bit forward. So, what did we actually do? You saw the internet picture, lots of users putting data in the service. The idea behind KILT is actually pretty easy. There's an attester. This attester is a trusted entity. Trusted entity can be a government, can be a big company, can be somebody who is really trusted, just a person. And this entity gives documents, signed documents, electronic signed documents to users. And those users take this, these documents and put them in their wallets. Like you get a passport, like you get a document from your university, like whatever document you can put in your wallet. This is basically killed, actually. So the user when he has such a document, can go to another entity, open his wallet, take out the, um, uh, the credential, the document, and show it to the verifier. This is how the real world works. And we're just building this real world scenario in IT. Um, you all heard this is a blockchain company, so what does it have to do with blockchain? The interesting thing is that when they attest them, issues this document and gives it to the user so that the user can put it in. The tester also produces a hash value of the document and puts it on the blockchain. Putting a hash value on a blockchain is a pretty good idea because hash values are not personalized data. So we're not putting any personalized data on the blockchain, we're just taking hash values and put them on the blockchain. So now, when the user goes to a service, and shows his credential, or her credential in this case, um, the service can use the same hash algorithm, make the hash of the document, and see if the attester had put this on the blockchain before. So the, uh, the verifier, the, the, the service, can verify if the document is valid. And this is what we use the blockchain for. And if the service trusts the attester, then the service can perform in a way that the user actually wanted it. So this is basically what we built. Of course, there's not only one document for one service. If you have a real cool document, which states that you are, I don't know, a nice person, that could be accepted by many services. 
So if you have a good document, you can take it to any service, and all those services can look at the blockchain if it's valid. Um, this also has the advantage that the attester is not involved in the uh, verification process. This is a little bit complicated, but this is really important. When you go into a bar and the bouncer tells you, I need a document so, uh, which says that you are 18, <clears throat> you can show your passport, you can show whatever you want. But the bouncer will not call the university, will not call the Department of Motor Vehicles and, and ask, is this person really 18? They just trust the document. And this makes it very scalable. So actually what we get out of this process is first the sovereignty of the user. The user can choose which document he will show to which service. And the data is owned by the user because it is in the wallet. This thing is very, very scalable because the attester is not involved in the verification process. Millions of people can go to bars and show their documents without the server of the university crashing because the server of the university is not involved in this process. And the same thing also gives you a lot of privacy or anonymity. The university will never find out in which bar you were, actually, because they're not asked. The whole thing, what we build, is privacy by design. No personal data is ever stored on a blockchain. But still, we have the advantages of the blockchain because we have the high availability. A blockchain, you cannot switch off. So the validity can always be checked. No possibility to change that. Uh, it is completely resistant against failure and completely resistant uh, against fraud. Because as we all learned in the last years, this is not possible with blockchains. So this is a very brief overview about what it does. How it really works, we will see later. Um, and we know that there are millions of use cases for that. And we will see two use, use cases in the next two, or two possible use cases in the next two talks. Um, but uh, we also need you to do something. I said before, I think it's not going from a small uh, startup in Berlin. We have to do it somehow together. So if you're business people, um, Think of those use cases. Think of use cases of killed in your environment. There will be a lot of them. Um, the hurdle of using killed is very low because it's for free. Just use it. You're putting it on a website, you can download it and start playing. Um, so you can start thinking about your project tomorrow, actually. And we have a killed demo client. We will see that later, too, where managers can model their business cases, model their cases, their projects already without the help of any computer scientists or so, just playing around with it. And if you are a computer scientist, you can download the SDK and start building cool software and killed. And that is not necessary to understand a blockchain and how it works, because it has a very easy software development kit in JavaScript on top of it. If you're from media, would be nice if you talk about it. Um, cr please create awareness about the huge problem we see and a possible solution. There might be other solutions, but this is a possible solution uh, for tackling this problem. If you're a developer, help us improve this thing, because we're a small company. We need any help, so build a community together with us and make it better. If you're not a developer, no problem, play around with it and say, oh, something's missing here, and call us and tell us what's missing. Uh, we will take care that it's getting better. And I think what's also very important, try to build business on Kilt. There is a lot of opportunities. As you probably know, we come from industry, so we're not thinking altruistic all the way. Uh, we think that the system can only evolve in the market if people can earn money with it. So there's huge opportunities. If you have trust in your company or in your person, you can monetize this trust with Kilt. You can also become a system integrator. We will see system integrators later and build a business on top of that like on any open source software. You can also develop paid services on top of Kilt. Kilt is free software or open source software, but on top of that, of course, you can build any software which is paid like you want. And later, when the mainnet goes live, of course, you can run a node. 
like a miner in Bitcoin and earn money by, uh, by um, just being part of the infrastructure. So this is basically what I wanted to tell you. Um, thank you very much.